The buzzer on my intercom rarely scares me, but it often upsets me when it sounds at the moment when I'm on the edge of a problem and about to make a breakthrough. So it was this morning, I pressed the button and answered, trying to keep the sarcasm out of my voice. Yes, I'm sorry, Mr. Fletcher. Miss Sally Fletcher is here to see you. Sally Fletcher is my 16-year-old daughter. I was surprised that she was in my office. She was supposed to be at school. Let him come in. The door opened, and I saw my secretary, Eileen. She had a strange expression on her face, and when she saw me, she rolled her eyes. Stepping aside, my daughter entered the office. Eileen went out and closed the door. Miss Fletcher, why aren't you at school, and how did you get here? The outfit my daughter was wearing was definitely not her usual school clothes. Instead of a pair of worn jeans and a t-shirt, she was wearing an expensive women's business suit, trousers, a white top, and a blazer. Her shoes matched the suit, and as I understood it, she had pumps with heels. She put on her glasses. It was strange in itself. She had contact lenses. I had never seen her wear glasses. Her thick brown hair, instead of hanging loose, was pulled back behind her head in a bun. I got the impression that she is one of those irreconcilable female executives who work two floors above me. If you want to know, today is teacher's working day. There is such a thing in the States, a day when students do not attend school, but teachers still come to school and work. I thought it would be a great opportunity to come and spend some time with you. To answer your second question, I took an Uber. Oh, and what on earth do you want to talk about? Should I invite you to lunch? Go shopping? Dismissing my feeble attempts at wit, Sally leaned back in her chair, modestly crossing her legs at the ankle, and smiled. Daddy, I want to have a serious conversation with you about our family. My eyebrows shot up, and I looked at her with what she probably interpreted as a hint of disdain. Really? If that's your intention, then get started. She nodded. She took out a large manila envelope from her bag, which she placed on the floor next to her chair. Leaning forward, she carefully placed it on my desk. I think you should take a look at this before we start. There were no visible markings on the envelope, so I unfastened the metal clasp and looked inside. I groped for a stack of papers and pulled them out on the table. The first page was white, with only my name in the middle. I turned the pages to myself and began to leaf through them lazily, not paying any attention to them. Outwardly, it looked approximately like the minutes of a court hearing. I know what they look like because I am a practicing lawyer. When I flipped through the last of the white pages and a 20 by 25 glossy black and white photo caught my eye, I almost suffocated. The picture showed a man and a woman making love. My eyes flew up and my voice tightened. Sally Angelica Fletcher, what is this abomination and why are you giving it to me? Daddy, for the first time I heard venom in her voice. Maybe you should take a closer look before making statements and declarations. I growled, but she gave me good advice. You always need to know exactly what you're dealing with before you get emotional. I picked up the top photo and took a closer look at it. The queasy feeling in my gut arose almost as quickly as my mental understanding. The man in the photo is me. I swallowed as my mouth suddenly filled with an excess of saliva. My memory kicked in, remembering the day the photo was taken. Looking up at my daughter, I saw that she was smiling sweetly. Yes, Daddy. I know all about your adventures. All the details are in that package, along with phone calls, audio recordings, and a flash drive with an exciting video. As a lawyer, I always try to act calm and collected, regardless of the circumstances and the situation. I did not succeed. Where the hell did you get this? Did your mother put you up to this? I'll have her hide nailed to the garage door. Calm down, Daddy. You're not very good at being angry. For your information, I've collected everything in that folder. It's the 21st century, Dad. All equipment can be purchased online. There's so much information on how and where to get information and everything you need to know about the divorce laws in this state. I suppose you know a lot about them. I stared at my 16-year-old daughter as if she had just stepped off an interplanetary ship. You? But how? What for? For me and Bud. Bud is Sally's 10-year-old brother. For Bud? None of us wants to live in a separate house. We like it when you and mom are in the house. I decided to make sure that you both don't do anything stupid like file for divorce while Bud and I are still living at home. Once we're gone, you can do whatever you want. So you're going to blackmail me? In fact, yes. Stunned is not the word that would best describe me. Closer to that would be a complete shock. 
I've had to deal with lawyers who weren't as confident and in control of the situation as my daughter was during negotiations. I flipped through her information. There was no doubt that she had done a thorough job. What do you suggest? As far as I know, mom doesn't know anything about your affair with Sarah Phillips. I intend to keep this a secret. I have the terms of the agreement. They are listed in the package. Basically, you're stopping cheating on mom, and I'm not going to provide her with all the information she needs to make your life hell on earth. As far as I understand, in this state, adultery is still grounds for divorce. And as a rule, the process is strongly inclined in favor of the partner in the marriage who did not cheat. Most property divisions occur in a ratio of 75-25 in favor of a woman if a man cheats. And this includes any business that the rights to which belong to a man. That means you'll have to sell your partnership and give her half the money. Of course, there are other points, including custody and visitation provisions. Even under such circumstances, a father should be proud when his child shows such subtlety and understanding. Still, I had to be on my guard. There was a possibility that this whole exchange of opinions could become nuclear and destroy my whole life. What do you suggest? You stop your fornication and never do it again until Bud graduates from high school. By the way, you're fully funding two college accounts for Bud and me in our names with an independent trustee for Bud. I'm going to go to court and get my emancipation. You can call me a trustee of my college foundation. You will stay in our house with your mother and present yourself in all respects as husband and wife, loving parents and devoted partners. And if I don't agree to this blackmail, everything in this package, as well as much more, will be available via email and on downloadable digital media to the full list of your partners, employees, and the email list of your customers. In addition, it will be sent to your personal mailing list, including the preacher and your parents. The information is already in the cloud on several servers and will be automatically forwarded if certain actions are not performed regularly. Damn, I thought. She's a scheming little fool. I'm so proud of her. She's going to be a great lawyer someday. But there were more serious things to do than secretly celebrate my daughter. It looks like you've put me in a situation where I have no other choice. That was the plan, Daddy. Then I have to agree. In a few days, I will send you all the necessary documents and an official list of requirements. I will be waiting for it back, signed and notarized. If I don't get it five days after you get it, I'll pull the trigger. I nodded. She didn't offer me a hug or even a handshake. I watched as she picked up her bag and left. Constance Edith Fletcher, Certified Public Accountant. The tax season was over a long time ago, so my schedule was as flexible as it usually is. Sitting in my office... I casually glanced at two computer screens that constantly displayed the current situation in the markets and some technical data on several stocks that I was tracking. The indicators showed the possibility of a strategic move in one of the stocks. I made a mental note to keep a close eye on her over the next few days. I was about to move on to a more detailed study of the data on this campaign when I heard a knock on the door of my office. My secretary stuck her head in with a grin. Your daughter has come to see you. Let her in. Sally, my 16-year-old daughter, walked purposefully through the door, carrying a leather bag over one shoulder. It was a pleasant surprise, but I had a few questions. Before I could start, she sat down on the chair in front of my desk and smiled at me. The glasses gave her a much more mature look than usual. Her hair, pulled back in a bun, did not soften her appearance at all. The pantsuit she was wearing was remarkably similar to many of mine. She looked much older than her 16 years. Why aren't you at school, young lady? Teacher's working day. I thought now would be a good time to come over to you to discuss some things. Well, it just so happens that I have most of the day off. Do you want to go to the mall? We can shop while we talk. I think it would be better if we discuss this in your office, Mom. The word mom at the end of the sentence sounded slightly reproachful. I wasn't sure I liked the way it sounded. Good. If that's what you want, go ahead. By that time, curiosity had got me by the tail. I couldn't wait to find out what was bothering my girl so much that she came all the way to the city center to talk about it with me. Sally reached in her bag and took out a large manila envelope. She put it on my desk and I pulled it towards me. Should I look into it? I think it's worth it before we start talking. Nodding, I undid the clasp on the envelope. I turned it over and the contents spilled out onto the table. The top page was empty except for my name, Constancy. Fletcher in the middle of the page. 
I didn't pay much attention to the rest. The photos caught my attention, and I pulled out the top one. Gasping, I put my hand to my mouth before I could say anything. When I looked at the photo, I felt a sudden nausea. I was there, in all my glory. I looked at Sally in horror. Where did you get this? Relax, Mom. I have collected all the data contained in this package. It's amazing what you can find out on the internet. The hardware was mostly from Amazon. It was a bit difficult to get some of them. You know, you really should learn how to close the curtains in a hotel room when you decide to spend the evening with your lover. How? I mean that, that room was on the eighth floor. For the first time, Sally smiled with a hint of satisfaction. It's not so difficult to learn how to control a drone well enough to conduct a little surveillance. I looked at the damn photo again. Looking at the desktop, I saw that there were at least a dozen similar pictures. Sally continued. This package contains transcripts of phone calls, texts, and emails. There is a flash drive with videos and, of course, photos. I definitely felt bad. Not only did my daughter catch me cheating, she also documented it all in a very professional manner. Her dad would be proud, I'm sure. I looked at her again. What are you going to do about it? That's what I want to talk about. There is a list of things in this package that I will insist on and that you must agree to. For example, first of all, you immediately end your affair with Roger McMillan and never enter into any kind of relationship, affair, or one-night stand again. If I find out that you did this, everything I've collected will be sent to all your clients, your corporate board, all your friends and parents. I gasped. She was going to blackmail me. Why? What do you want from this? I want my family. Bud... And I want to have two parents in our house who would behave like parents and support us as parents. You're going to keep our family together, act like parents until Bud graduates from high school. After that, you can do whatever you want. I looked at the stack of materials on my desk. My brain was in active problem-solving mode. I considered all the options, trying to find a solution in terms of risk and benefit. Mom, if you don't agree, it will happen. All data is stored in the cloud on several servers configured to work. If some things are not done regularly, the reset will happen automatically. My child certainly knew how to plan. Everything was orderly and organized for her. I was trapped in a frame. What are my options? Accept my terms, or I make a reset, and Dad gets the first packet of information. It occurred to me that this might be more of an opportunity than a problem. I needed more time to think, so I decided to stall for time. How much time do I have to make a decision? I will send you the agreement by email tomorrow. You'll have five days to think about it. If I do not receive a signed and notarized agreement after five days, the data will be reset. I relaxed a little. A lot can change in five days. Good. Three days later, Bill Fletcher sat locked in his office and stared gloomily at the piece of paper in his hand. It was a contract sent by his daughter which set out her demands. He studied the document several times. The copy he held in his hands and the other copy lying on the table had notes in the margins. Systematically, he marked the items on her list. His affair with Sarah ended a few months ago, and he hasn't had another mistress since. This part of the deal didn't bother him as much as Sally's threats to reveal his story to Constance and the world. A divorce and such exposure would ruin him professionally and financially. The request to fund his children's college education didn't matter that much. He will do it anyway, and the creation of trust may provide some tax advantages. The requirement to continue staying at home and raising their children was not as burdensome as some people think. He loved being a father. He found happiness in being actively involved in the lives of his children. As Bud was approaching the age when he would be able to compete in athletics, Bill was looking forward to several years of football and baseball games. All in all, from Bill's point of view, what his daughter was asking for didn't seem like such a bad deal. This gave him an incentive to stay away from vicious relationships. The house has been kind of restless lately. Maybe if he starts acting like a parent, things will get better. He called one of the girls from the secretariat, who was a notary, to bring her book. The same day, Constance was sitting in her boomer in the parking lot of the office building where the accounting firm she worked for was located. Reaching over to the console, and pushing aside some papers, she took out the phone that was stored there. She dialed the number and waited for an answer. Good afternoon, beautiful. Do you mind playing a little? I'm sorry, Roger. I have some bad news. We're done. I will throw this phone away after I take out the battery and SIM card. 
I don't want to hear from you or see you again. There was a stunned silence on the other end of the phone. I thought we had something special. It's not as special as you thought. You scratched the itch, Roger. I like you. You're a good guy. But in the last few weeks, events have happened in my life that complicate everything. This whole affair has become like an anchor, and I need to get back on track. I just can't believe it. Is that all? Is a phone call and eight months of a relationship over? Don't be sad, Roger, and don't whine. It doesn't suit you. We had fun, but I have to think about the future, and you're not in it. Goodbye, Roger. After disconnecting, Constance opened her phone and pulled out the battery. Then she took out the SIM card and broke it into small pieces. After making a few stops on the way home, she bought a mocha latte, wrapped the battery in a paper napkin, and threw it into the trash basket in the driveway. After going to the grocery store to buy chicken for dinner, she was able to throw the phone itself into a commercial waste container at the back of the store. She simply threw the small pieces of the SIM card into the gutter and rubbed them with the toe of her shoe. Smiling, Constance got into the car and drove home. Five days later, Sally was sitting in a cafe near her school. Her laptop was open on the table, which was why she was sitting with her back to the wall, where no one could sit. There were also two envelopes on the table, one from his mother, the other from his father. A transcript of her mother's phone conversation with Roger was displayed on the laptop screen. Sally smiled as she read. She already knew that the phone in her mother's car was no longer there, and it was no longer active. The interception program on her father's home computer showed that his firm's accountant had already begun the process of financing college trust funds for her and Bud. Since she knew that her father's affair was no longer active, she was sure that he was fulfilling her conditions. Two years later, Sally stood on the stage at the school graduation and looked at the bleachers of the auditorium, where she knew her family was sitting. Squinting against the blinding light, she saw that immediately after receiving her diploma, her mom, dad, and Bud stood up and enthusiastically applauded. According to the plan, she was supposed to meet her family, grandmother, grandfather, and friends at a festive dinner. The upcoming summer was set aside for travel, and in the fall she would go to university. As she walked down the aisle to her seat, she was pleased with how well her plan had worked out. Life in the Fletcher family has become a routine that can be called the American dream. Her brother went to high school and played baseball successfully. Her father coached his minor league team until he joined the junior league team. Now he was going to be a catcher on the first baseball team. Academically, he did well with an average grade of B. His goal was to play college baseball and see where it would take him. He was smart enough to understand that it was important to get a useful degree and expected to get an education in computer science. Sally was just happy. Constance fulfilled the agreement. By all accounts, Constance and Bill were a happy, loving couple who supported their children. Sally knew that they were doing all the same things as other couples. They went to parties, invited friends to enjoy the pool and barbecue. Sally also knew that her parents made love regularly. This was evidenced by the sound she heard on recording devices turned on throughout the house. Everything seemed to be going perfectly. Three years later, Sally was sitting with her parents in the same hall to watch her younger brother graduate from school. Jonathan Beecham was sitting next to her. Jonathan was her boyfriend, and it seemed like they were serious. They were finishing their senior year. Jonathan was going to continue his master's degree. Sally, as her parents had expected, had already enrolled in the law academy. Looking at her parents, she thought they looked happy. Over the years, Sally has regularly updated her observations. She was sure that none of them had lost their way during this time. Moreover, she was somewhat surprised at how well they got along under the circumstances. She knew that the day of reckoning had come. Her agreement with both parents expired when Bud graduated from high school. Now Sally had to decide what was the best thing to do in the current situation. Suddenly, everyone stood up and started applauding. Looking at the stage, Sally saw her younger brother accepting a diploma, and then, like herself many years ago, turning to the audience and waving his hand with a huge grin. The tradition will continue with a festive dinner. Everyone went down the steps to the lobby to find Bud and congratulate him. The day after, the grandparents went home. Jonathan returned to the university. Sally stayed the night with them. Bud was celebrating with his baseball teammates. That evening, she was sitting at the dinner table with her parents. 
Her mom ordered Chinese food, and they enjoyed the meal. When everything was ready and the table was cleared, Sally returned to her room. When she returned, she found her parents still sitting at the table, each of them drinking a glass of wine. Can I do the same? Of course, princess, help yourself. Sally smiled at her father and poured a glass of wine. Sitting down at the table, she took a sip and then looked at them both intently. I have something for you. I started doing it separately, but decided it would be better to do it as a family. Sally placed two manila envelopes in front of her parents. Each one had a name written on it. Before you open them, I want to confess a little and then make a few requests. What you do depends on you. Sally finished the rest of her wine, took a deep breath, and continued. A few years ago, I turned to each of you and asked you to conclude an agreement with me. You both agreed to my terms. Constance and Bill looked at each other, then turned and stared at Sally. With each of us? Did you make a deal with both of us? Yes. And as far as I know, everything went well. Bud and I had a great life. We had a loving and supportive family. We had a great house that we were proud to share with friends. We were all together and on good terms. Now these agreements have exhausted themselves. I did what I set out to do. What happens next depends on you. Sally looked at her parents and saw surprised and, as she realized, confused looks. Her father, a lawyer, spoke first. Sally, what were you going to do? To save our family. But why did you decide that this is exactly the way you need it? This was the part that Sally was so afraid of. I knew that you were both cheating or cheating on each other. I knew that if one or the other of you found out about this, there was a high probability that the subsequent explosion would tear our family apart and destroy our lives. I couldn't let that happen. Instead, I decided to use you and try to change the situation in our favor. It was a certain risk, but I was ready to take it. Suddenly, Sally's mother looked at her husband. Did you cheat on me? Bill lowered his head but then his eyes slowly lifted as he put it all together. You cheated too. It was her lever. Sally knew that while we didn't know about each other, she was in control of the situation and making her demands. I wouldn't tell you, so you wouldn't find out. And of course you wouldn't tell me. Think about her demands. Surely mine were very similar to yours. Stop cheating. To become good parents. To live as a loving couple. To support our children. Constance nodded. Then she turned to Sally. How did you come up with this scheme? Dad taught me that. Bill looked surprised. Did you teach me? Of course. I remember you telling me about the negotiations between the two sides, which seemed to be so far apart that they could never reconcile. You told me that the secret to successful negotiations is to figure out what both sides want most in the world. After that, everything else is just troubleshooting. I knew that you and mom love Bud and me more than anything in the world and that you were willing to agree to anything to make us happy. I just found a common language and eliminated everything else. Constance looked at her daughter with awe. Bill leaned back in his chair and laughed heartily. I've had to deal with the best and smartest negotiators in the world, and you, baby, surpassed them all. Thanks, Daddy. But there is still an elephant at the table. These packages contain information that I have collected about both of you. I don't need them anymore. All information was deleted from the cloud, and the systems for dropping bombs were defused and destroyed. These are the latest copies, one for each. What should I do with them? Constance and Bill looked at each other, and then back at Sally. Can we talk about this for a while? Of course. Do you want me to leave? No. We're going to my office, and you can go into the room and watch TV. Everyone stood up. Sally took the bags with her. Constance and Bill took more wine and headed to his office. There they sat in chairs facing each other. Constance was thoughtful, but she spoke first. Did you really have an affair? Yes. A long time ago. She was a paralegal at the firm. It lasted less than two months. There was nothing after that? No. I was very busy and focused on the company. And then Sally came that day with her proposal, and it hit me. I didn't need to change anything to meet her requirements. I really had no desire to have another affair. He did not give me satisfaction and did not give me anything that I appreciated. Then why did you do it? Bill shrugged his shoulders. At that time, there was such a climate in the office among the partners that this was to be expected. If you didn't have an affair, the others looked at you as a traitor. If you didn't cheat, they didn't feel safe. But I can ask you the same question. Constance took a deep breath. 
I was scared. You spent all your time and energy on your firm and practice. You worked late, and when you were at home, you thought about work. Our bed life has come to naught. The children noticed it. It seemed to me that I was no longer attractive to you and that you were preparing to break up. Then Sally showed up and dropped that bomb. I found that it gave me an easy way out. I immediately stopped the affair and directed most of my attention to the house. Yes, I noticed that you've suddenly become more attentive. It seemed to me that your attitude had changed. Shortly after that, I reduced the number of cases and began to spend more time at home. I remember, I was wondering what has changed. You started coaching the baseball league. I've never been a big fan of sports, but going to the field with you and bud for training and games has become such a fun activity. You taught me how to count points, and I started keeping records of games. We studied with the children together. Bill looked at the woman he had loved a long time ago. He suddenly realized that he still loved her and was still in love with her. I love you, Constance, and I always have. Can we do without it? Constance looked at Bill. He was a few years older, a little heavier, but he was still the handsome, witty man she'd fallen in love with in college. Leaning forward, she took his hands in hers and looked into his eyes. Bill, I can't imagine any other place I'd like to be or any other person I'd like to be with. I think our daughter is wiser and smarter than we could have imagined. Yes, we can get through this. To a large extent, we have already done this. The last few years have been idyllic. Let's not change anything. Bill chuckled. Then what are we going to do with these packages? Constance looked past Bill to the door leading to the patio and pool. Is the grill ready? Bill chuckled. All I have to do is turn on the gas. Let's make a bonfire. Bill stood up and pulled Constance to him, kissed her hard, and then led her by the hand back into the room, where Sally was sitting on the couch with bags on her lap. Well, have you decided? We have decided. Come with us. Sally followed her father out onto the patio, where he removed the lid from the large gas grill. Turning on the valve and opening the lid, he looked at Sally. He pressed the ignition button, and the flame broke out on the grill burners. Without saying a word, Sally threw two bags on the grill. Almost immediately, both packages began to burn. The three of them stood and watched until only ashes remained of them, which began to be carried away by the evening breeze. When everything was gone, Sally looked at her parents. What now?